beamforming or spatial filtering is a signal processing technique used in sensor arrays for directional signal transmission or reception. This is achieved by combining elements in a phased array in such a way that signals at particular angles experience constructive interference while others experience destructive interference. Beamforming can be used at both the transmitting and receiving ends in order to achieve spatial selectivity. The improvement compared with omnidirectional reception transmission is known as the receive-transmit gain. Beamforming can be used for radio or sound waves. It has found numerous applications in radar, sonar, seismology, wireless communications, radio astronomy, acoustics, and biomedicine. Adaptive beamforming is used to detect and estimate the signal of interest at the output of a sensor array by means of optimal spatial filtering in interference rejection. Beamforming techniques to change the directionality of the array when transmitting. A beam former controls the phase and relative amplitude of the signal at each transmitter. In order to create a pattern of constructive and destructive interference in the wavefront, when receiving, information from different senses is combined in a way where the expected pattern of radiation is preferentially observed. For example in sonar, to send a sharp pulse of underwater sound towards a ship in the distance. Simply transmitting that sharp pulse from every sonar projector in an array simultaneously fails because the ship will first hear the pulse from the speaker that happens to be nearest the ship, then later pulses from speakers that happen to be the further from the ship. The beam forming technique involves sending the pulse from each projector at slightly different times so that every pulse hits the ship at exactly the same time, producing the effect of a single strong pulse from a single powerful projector. The same thing can be carried out in air using loudspeakers, or in radar, radio using antennas, in passive sonar, and in reception in active sonar. The beamforming technique involves combining delayed signals from each hydrophone at slightly different times so that every signal reaches the output at exactly the same time, making one loud signal, as if the signal came from a single, very sensitive hydrophone. Receive beamforming can also be used with microphones or radar antennas. With narrowband systems the time delay is equivalent to a phase shift, so in this case the array of antennas, each one shifted a slightly different amount, is called a phased array. A narrow band system, typical of radars, is one where the bandwidth is only a small fraction of the center frequency. With wide band systems this approximation no longer holds, which is typical in sonars. In the receive beam former the signal from each antenna may be amplified by a different weight. Different weighting patterns can be used to achieve the desired sensitivity patterns. A main lobe is produced together with nulls and side lobes, as well as controlling the main lobe width and the side lobe levels. The position of a null can be controlled. This is useful to ignore noise or jammers in one particular direction, while listening for events in other directions. A similar result can be obtained on transmission. For the full mathematics on directing beams using amplitude and phase shifts, see the mathematical section in phased array. Beamforming techniques can be broadly divided into two categories. Conventional beamformers, adaptive beamformers or phased array desired signal maximization mode interference signal minimization or cancellation mode. Conventional beamformers use a fixed set of weightings and time delays to combine the signals from the sensors in the array, primarily using only information about the location of the sensors in space and the wave directions of interest. In contrast, adaptive beamforming techniques generally combine this information with properties of the signals actually received by the array, typically to improve rejection of unwanted signals from other directions. This process may be carried out in either the time or the frequency domain. As the name indicates, an adaptive beam former is able to automatically adapt its response to different situations. Some criterion has to be set up to allow the adaption to proceed such as minimizing the total noise output. 
because of the variation of noise with frequency, in wideband systems it may be desirable to carry out the process in the frequency domain. Beamforming can be computationally intensive. Sonar phased array has a data rate low enough that it can be processed in real time in software, which is flexible enough to transmit and or receive in several directions at once. In contrast, radar phased array has a data rate so high that it usually requires dedicated hardware processing, which is hardwired to transmit and or receive in only one direction at a time. However, newer field programmable gate arrays are fast enough to handle radar data in real time and can be quickly reprogrammed like software. Exploring the hardware software distinction, sonar beam forming requirements. Sonar itself has many applications, such as wide area search and ranging, underwater imaging sonars such as side scan sonar and acoustic cameras. Sonar beamforming implementation is similar in general technique but varies significantly in detail compared to electromagnetic system beamforming. Implementation Sonar applications vary from 1 Hz to as high as 2 MHz, and array elements may be few and large, or number in the hundreds yet very small. This will shift sonar beam forming design efforts significantly between demands of such system components as the front end and the actual beamformer computational hardware downstream. High frequency, focus beam, multi element imaging search sonars and acoustic cameras often implement fifth order spatial processing that places strains equivalent to Aegis radar demands on the processors. Many sonar systems, such as on torpedoes, are made up of arrays of up to 100 elements that must accomplish beam steering over a 100-degree field of view and work in both active and passive modes. Sonar arrays are used both actively and passively in one, two, and three-dimensional arrays. One-dimensional line arrays are usually in multi-element passive systems towed behind ships and in single or multi-element side scan sonar. Two-dimensional planar arrays are common in active passive ship hull-mounted sonars and some side scan sonar. Three-dimensional spherical and cylindrical arrays are used in sonar demes in the modern submarine and ships. Sonar differs from radar in that in some applications such as wide area search all directions often need to be listened to, and in some applications broadcast to simultaneously, thus a multi-beam system is needed. In a narrowband sonar receiver the phases for each beam can be manipulated entirely by signal processing software, as compared to present radar systems that use hardware to listen in a single direction at a time. Sonar also uses beam forming to compensate for the significant problem of the slower propagation speed of sound as compared to that of electromagnetic radiation. Inside look sonars. The speed of the towing system or vehicle carrying the sonar is moving at sufficient speed to move the sonar out of the field of the returning sound. Ping. In addition to focusing algorithms intended to improve reception, many side scan sonars also employ beam steering to look forward and backward to catch incoming pulses that would have been missed by a single side looking beam. Beam forming schemes. A conventional beam former can be a simple beam former also known as delay and some beam former. All the weights of the antenna elements can have equal magnitudes. The beam former is steered to a specified direction only by selecting appropriate phases for each antenna. If the noise is uncorrelated and there are no directional interferences, the signal-to-noise ratio of a beam former with antennas receiving a signal of power is where is noise variance or noise power, null steering beam former, frequency domain beam former, beam forming history and wireless communication standards. Beam forming techniques used in cellular phone standards have advanced through the generations to make use of more complex systems to achieve higher density cells with higher throughput. Passive mode, non-standardized solutions wideband code division multiple access supports direction of arrival-based beam forming. Active mode, 
mandatory standardized solutions 2G, transmit antenna selection as an elementary beam forming 3G, WCDMA, transmit antenna array beam forming 3G evolution, LTE, UMB, multiple input multiple output precoding based beam forming with partial space division multiple access beyond 3G, more advanced beam forming. Solutions to support SDMA such as closed loop beam forming and multidimensional beam forming are expected. An increasing number of consumer 802.11 ACK Wi Fi devices with MIMO capability can support beam forming to boost data communication rates. Beamforming for speech audio. Beamforming can be used to try to extract sound sources in a room, such as multiple speakers in the cocktail party problem. This requires the locations of the speakers to be known in advance, for example by using the time of arrival from the sources to MICs in the array, and inferring the locations from the distances. Compared to carrier wave telecommunications, natural audio contains a variety of frequencies. It is advantageous to separate frequency bands prior to beam forming because different frequencies have different optimal beam form filters. Properly isolating these bands involves specialized non-standard filter banks. In contrast, for example, the standard FFT band filters implicitly assume that the only frequencies present in the signal are exact harmonics, frequencies which lie between. These harmonics will typically activate all of the FFT channels. Instead, filters can be designed in which only local frequencies are detected by each channel, and these are typically non-orthogonal unlike the FFT basis.